Well, hey, Becoming Me, I am so excited to introduce you to my warrior friend, Faith. Faith, welcome to Becoming Me. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and honored. Thank you, Emily. Well, I am honored to have you with us, and it's been so much fun just getting to know you, your story, your journey. We had a really fun warrior conversation on how to walk in confidence, godfidence, and I'm just pumped for today, you to unpack your story, like who you are and who you're becoming. So before we dive into your story, if someone didn't know who you are, just introduce yourself for us. Yes, my name is Faith Ann. I am a Christian life coach. I also work for Dale Carnegie Training. So I have a few things in the pot. Um, I love just helping people grow and develop. Um, That's really my why is to help people live loved and and see their value in whatever place God puts me in. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to be able to share more of my story today and how I've got to this point and, and where God is hopefully writing my story, you know, to continue. So. Absolutely. And you definitely are living that out. Like every time I get on Instagram and see a new post from you, I'm encouraged and inspired to be who God made me to be. So he's definitely working in and through you. And let's just dive in. Let's dive into your story. Like what has made you who you are today? I think it's a a mixture of things and then God uses everything. Um, Honestly, even in, even the little pieces that we don't realize he's using, um, but everything is working together for our good. And especially over the past couple of years, I've just realized that more than ever, um, particularly growing up, um, I was a big athlete and I loved playing sports that kind of consumed my life. And before I knew it, um, I started placing my identity in that from a very early age. Um, I didn't recognize it at the time, but as I continued into my teen years, um, I just continued to put my identity in myself as a tennis player um, or as people perceived me. I think those were the, the two biggest things was putting my identity in other people and then in sports. So to, to start off, that was just um, how I went through kind of my childhood was, was looking for that external validation. And whenever I didn't get it, whether it was from people or tennis, it was heartbreaking and it was devastating because that turned into kind of an idol for me um, and a God. So that was probably like the first big heartbreak was from realizing that, that my identity, in fact, wasn't based on my tennis ability or what people thought of me. It was kind of earth shattering, but then God replaced that and filled that God-sized hole that only he could fill. Um, So I would just say say that starting out with my becoming story um, was a lot of that intertwined into it. Wow. If somebody was tuning in right now and they were like nodding their head, resonating, like, man, I really understand. I'm with you, Faith. How would you encourage them to have that moment where you're identifying and that's hard work to identify like, hey, I'm getting my validation, my worth from this thing, but it really is from God. How do they bridge that gap? How do we move there? Yeah, I, I think for me personally, it was just coming to that sense of heartbreak in a sense, like I I mentioned of dang, nothing is going to fill me, um, of this world. Like nothing of this world is going to fill this God size hole that is there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's exhausting living in that. And so I think the first way that you can become aware that you're doing that is if, um, it's very upsetting to you, you know, Mm -hmm. if people don't accept you, if people reject you and it's like devastating to you, that's a good sign. If um, you're getting super upset and emotional at your um, performance and maybe it's like a negative self-talk of your, your worth compared to um, whether you won or lost a game, like that's um, an easy way to know if you're putting too much stock in something. And I think realizing for me that I don't get to determine my worth and that external things of this world don't determine my worth. Um, but looking to God and saying, God, everything else is so empty. I want you to show me 
who I am and to tell me how much I'm worth. Like, I want to see myself through your eyes. And at that time, I, that I was like heartbroken over this realization, I didn't trust God. I wasn't walking with him in the way that I am currently and will hopefully grow even more in the future. Um, But I really didn't see that he could fill that at the time. I was just asking him because out of last resort, honestly, it was like, man, I've tried everything else, God. Like, I guess you can get in the driver's seat now because it hasn't worked out for me. And um, once he stepped in and my heart was softened, it was the most transformational thing. I started walking like we last talked about in confidence mm-hmm. rather than just confidence in my tennis abilities, confidence in my personality or how others liked me. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've become so much more genuine and authentic because now I know who I am yeah. and, and I know whose I am. Right. And, and, and I think that that was just such a transformative moment. I was 17. I remember when I like fully surrendered that control to God, I kind of believed in God growing up, you know, I got baptized when I was 10. So I knew God, um, but I didn't have a personal relationship with him until I went through those kind of hard things as a teenager. And I fully surrendered to him at that time. Um, And once I, and once I did that, it was a edifying process. You know, it wasn't just like overnight. Okay. You're good. Like I'm still being edified day by day and more transformed into his image. But the way that I walk now, I think someone who has their confidence rooted in the Lord can walk differently than maybe someone who doesn't have that grounded foundation um, and know their value and worth from his perspective. Yeah. So that if more insight on kind of that, that change or transition, um, Mm -hmm. that's really what it was like. That's so powerful. And like, thank you for unpacking that for us. It, you know, we all have that inciting incident, that moment. And I love how you even gave us little signs to look for how to know we might be in that space and then inviting God to become, you know, that bedrock for knowing whose you are. Um, you know, I'd be curious, you know, I love also that you shared too the reality of just because you have that inciting moment doesn't mean like we walk in it perfectly now. (laughs) Right. And so what are some ways that you remind yourself to walk in confidence every day? Yeah, I I think just constantly evaluating myself, um, and noticing instances during the day where I'm kind of triggered or whenever I might be trying to, um, prove myself to someone. Um, I recently have been in meetings with very successful people and for some, it can be intimidating. Right. And it, and it was for me for a short time and maybe it still is a little bit to a certain extent, but not as nearly as much as it was before. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard this on a, a podcast once. They were talking about this guy going into an interview and he was so nervous, um, almost to the point of like, he was going to throw up, like he was just shaking because it was a really important interview. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this guy told him like, you're, you're putting those people on a pedestal right now. Like they are an idol to you. They are taking God's place just Mm -hmm. because of their rank in the company or how much money they have, you know, whatever it is, I think it's important that we're constantly evaluating, like, who are we getting intimidated by? And why is that? Like, maybe we are putting them on too high of a pedestal when they're just another normal human, like you and I, that pedestal highest seat needs to be reserved for our heavenly father, our creator, protector and provider. So Um, For me, that's just something that I try to do consistently and asking the Lord to reshape um, my vision or perspective Mm. on things whenever I try to prove my worth, because I don't need to prove it. I cannot get more valuable based on if people perceive me a certain way or if I step into a higher position or serve more clients and I can't get less valuable. Um, based on if I don't 
do those things. Um, yeah. We can be such performance driven, I think, especially in society today, that it's easy to put our value and our worth in how successful we are when in reality, success in the kingdom of God is obedience. Mm. Success is obedience to God. And that takes so much pressure off of us. And that's been a big part of my story just within the last couple of years as well with starting a business and becoming a coach. Man, if my eyes are on how many people I can serve, that is the wrong view. But if it's about just being obedient to God and every step that I take to the business, um, every interaction that I have with clients and leading from um, Holy Spirit and not myself, I think that's a big prayer of mine is like, God, move me out of the way and Holy Spirit speak through me because words that come from me and not him are probably not good. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I think it like takes a long time to, to figure out those mm -hmm. things. And it's, it's one thing hearing it from other people, but it's another thing actually experiencing it for yeah. yourself. Um, I kind of had a rebellious time like my freshman sophomore probably my, my probably more my sophomore like early junior year of high school and for me it was like a dating rampage like I know that some some high school girls can go through like just like constant cycle of dating mm -hmm. where for me it was like looking to guys to fill that um hole that that God needed to fill and I was looking to them to affirm me instead of him. And so I think that that was also every, every experience that we go through God uses for a reason. And I was able to take what I learned through that dating rampage, I'll say, you know, of a year and a half and, and kind of uh, change the trajectory going into college, thinking about relationships and how I pursue things maybe a little differently. Yeah. Um, and through college, I, I went to a small Christian university and I got my bachelor's in psychology and getting it from a faith-based perspective, I think was, was so vital. And I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed that there getting that education and then going on to another uni Christian university and getting my master's in organizational leadership. I think that my God wires each of us so uniquely and gives us these desires and passions based on like a path that only we can walk. Like no one else can live our life. They're not equipped to live our life. Like Emily, I can't live your life because right. I'm not you. I was designed for such a time as this, like in your life mm -hmm. where, whereas for me, God has shaped me and molded me um, and crafted me so that I can live it out. And, and, I think especially for women, it's so easy to compare ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a part of my becoming story too. It's like, there is no sense in doing that. And it's right. so easy to say, it, and it's so easy to say it, but it's a whole nother thing to actually do it. And a lot of times mm -hmm. I hadn't even realized that I was comparing myself. It was just so second nature to me, yeah. but becoming aware of that and stopping myself. Um, just realizing like the unique value that I hold and this other person holds, man, just because like they are in this position doesn't take anything away from, from me, but sometimes right. we can um, think that way. Right. Yeah. Like, Oh man, there's not a space for both of us to be successful in this area, but there is like, that's a lie mm -hmm. from the enemy. And um, so that's just another thing I've learned along the way so powerful. Like, thank you for unpacking those truths that you have learned and are learning on your becoming journey. Um, you know, I'm curious, are you a coffee drinker? I am. I yeah. love coffee. <laughs> Me too, girl. Like you already know before we started recording y'all, I have a huge cup of coffee. It's like, yes, it's time for coffee. Yes. But how, how do you drink your coffee? Well, I like it black with like a little cream in it, or I like chai lattes. Um, Ooh. and just regular vanilla lattes. I'm a latte girl as well. Ooh, yeah, but too. I can't just drink it like black with no cream. Like there's okay. gotta be okay, like, cream in it. Yeah, 
Mm. I haven't had you? a chai latte in a long time and they're delicious. Now I, I want one, but in the morning I do drink it black. So just okay. straight. I love it, but I, I like a good latte as well. So I'm with you. Um, so if you were having a vanilla latte with someone else on their own becoming journey, you're talking, you're encouraging them. What would you say to encourage and empower them to become who God made them to be? Hmm. I would I would say to to seek him and ask him what he has empowered you with or gifted you with um, in order to advance his kingdom. I think that that's I think that that's the biggest encouragement. I would say a lot of times we don't know our superpowers in a sense. And, and God um, can reveal that to us whenever we ask, you know, I think that there's many strengths that each person has, but there's like one or two superpowers that you just feel in a flow in whenever you're operating out of them. Like for instance, someone could be really good using um, digital software or whatever it is. And they just like lose time, like lose track of time while doing it. And they really enjoy it. That's kind of like the flow state. And I would encourage people to just become aware of that as they're becoming into who God created them to be. Um, Ask him to reveal that to you. If you aren't aware of that already, so that you can operate out of that superpower more and be a blessing and a gift to other people while you do it. I love that. That's incredible encouragement. And I also know you are a coach. And so you even come alongside people and you can help us find this superpower and walk confidently. So how can people connect with you and follow you online? And if they wanted to even ask you about coaching, where can they connect? Absolutely. The best place would be Instagram um, at Faith and Coaching, F-A-I-T-H-A-N-N Coaching. Um, and then you can also find me on LinkedIn for the same thing. Um, I'm on Facebook a little bit and TikTok at Faith and Coaching. So those are the main social media platforms. I love it. And y'all, we will have all the links in the show notes so you can easily click them and connect with Faith. But thank, thank you so much, Faith, just for encouraging us with your story and then empowering us to be who God made us to be as well. Like you're amazing. You inspire me. And just thank you so much. Oh, well, you inspire me. And I love this. Like, I love Becoming Me TV. I think it's such an amazing concept. And the Lord has, like, given you these capabilities to be able to steward this well. So uh, I just wanted to say that you inspire me as well, Emily. And I really enjoy our friendship and just the space that you hold for people to share their stories. So thank you. Thank you. You're amazing.